Welcome back to Squawk Box. A group of Republican senators are proposing a smaller stimulus bill, presenting President Biden with a potential path to a bipartisan compromise. Ron Moy joins us this morning with more on that. Good morning to you. Well, good morning, Andrew. Those Republican senators are going to the White House later today to pitch Biden directly on their plan. And this group of moderate Republicans includes several who served with Biden while he was in the Senate. That's Susan Collins of Maine, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, Rob Portman of Ohio. Now, Biden spoke with Collins yesterday. That is when he accepted their offer to meet and invited them to the White House for a full exchange of views. But the GOP plan is only $600 billion, and that's about a third of the $1.9 trillion package that the administration has proposed. Some of the major differences include direct checks. The GOP plan has them at $1,000 instead of $1,400. And they would also start to phase out for individuals making $50,000 a year and for couples making $100,000 a year. The boost in unemployment insurance would also end sooner than that September cutoff that Biden had envisioned. And the money for schools would be reduced to $20 billion instead of $170 $70 billion, though the funding for the vaccine would remain at $160 billion. So, Becky, while Biden is willing to hear this group out, the White House is also reiterating that the risk right now is not in doing too much, but in doing too little. Back to you. Elon, thank you very much. Obviously, the other big issue in Washington right now is the GameStop saga and Robin Hood and the call for hearings to try and figure out what was going on. For more on both these issues, let's bring in Pennsylvania Republican Senator Pat Toomey. He's also the incoming ranking member of the Senate Banking Committee, which will be holding a hearing to investigate the current state of the stock market. And and, and Senator Toomey, thanks for being with us. Maybe we'll start there. Uh, The hearings that are going to be held, when when you look at this situation, what do you think uh, really bothers you the most about it? Uh, What bothers me the most is uh, my colleagues who think we have to run out and pass a new law and have more regulation and somehow limit the freedom of people to participate in the stock market. So we can have our hearing, but uh, I hope it doesn't reinforce a tendency to do things that uh, we haven't made the case for why they need to be done. And I I do want to stress, you know, these platforms, these apps that make it so easy for people to trade at no cost, fractional shares sometimes, um, this is a great thing. This really helps to democratize our capital markets. It allows people of ordinary means to participate as investors at a small scale, which can grow over time. So um, I I sure hope that we don't end up doing something that damages, um, you know, a a really, really good innovation in our capital markets. What about the idea that Robinhood is restricting a lot of these stocks, that that people can't buy them on the way up? Right. So I I do want to make sure we understand what happened there. As you know, Becky, um, when a um, a stock gets particularly volatile, the clearinghouses require brokers to have more capital to make sure that they can carry through on the settlement two days after the execution, uh, despite the fact that the price may be very far away two days later from where it was. So the additional capital requirement is generally, I think, understandable and sensible. And it's quite plausible to me that it was the need to bring in additional capital that caused a temporary suspension in certain trading stocks on these platforms. But we should find that out. I mean, that's that would be an understandable reason driven by the, the regulatory requirements. If there's some other reason, it would be interesting to know. But but that, the capital requirements are pretty plausible one to me. Senator, let me let me just ask you, you say you're concerned about these hearings. I guess that's because of what you've heard from some of your your Democratic uh, counterparts uh, who will be asking questions at some of these things. Look, there there is the potential for manipulation, whether that be by the retail investors or whether it be by the the hedge funds, you know, that were trying to drive down prices or say that they had closed out of trades on different things. How deeply are you interested in digging into both of those issues? Look, I mean, I I think we'll find out. The SEC uh, routinely investigates these things. It is legal to short stock, and it should be legal. It is a helpful, in fact, necessary part of price discovery. So there are hedge funds that were shorting the stock. That happens every day, and that's perfectly okay. Now, were they out uh, deceiving people? Were they manipulating? Were they sending false information about the companies? That would be a different matter. I've not heard any such allegations. Similarly, on the part of the folks using social media as a platform to coordinate their buying. I'm not aware that 
they were lying or, or creating deception or fraud, they were celebrating the fact that maybe they were going to really put it to the, uh, the hedge funds. Uh, so uh, aside from what you think of their motivation, I, it's not at all clear to me that they did anything illegal. Um, so fine, we can do a hearing and uh, explore that. But as I say, my concern is that we have some kind of regulatory or legal reaction that's completely unnecessary. By the way, it's not like this is likely to become a regular feature of our markets. These retail investors, we all know how this is going to end for the late arrivals or people who held through the whole thing. They're going to lose a tremendous amount of money. That will tend to dissuade people going forward. I mean, you can only be enthusiastic for losing a lot of money for so long, and it kind of runs its course, is my guess. Senator, let me ask you a question about that, uh, because uh, I think we are actually in agreement that, that, that especially for those who've joined this party uh, towards the end, it, it could end badly. But one of the unique features of this phenomenon that we're watching is typically we've often talked about investor protection. And um, the, quote, little guy actually has argued they wanted that protection. This is the opposite right now. In fact, if yeah. you say the phrase investor protection, they say, don't protect me. And by the way, if you're trying to protect me, what you're really mm -hmm. doing is protecting the hedge fund. You're protecting the establishment. We want a laissez-faire uh, system. We want to be able to shoot right. the moon just like the hedge funds, and we should have that opportunity. What do you say to that? I, they're exactly right. Of course they should have that. These are, these are adults. To grown men and women. They can decide if they want to treat this as, a, as a, a gambling exercise, then let them do so. I mean, that this is their money. It's their decision. If they do this routinely, they will lose a lot of money. And as I say, eventually they will either be unable to continue or they'll lose their enthusiasm for it. But hey, who am I to tell them you can't invest your own money this way? Here's what we should be doing, right? You, you certainly should be protecting people from dishonesty, from fraud from misrepresentation, from false information. That's, that's, uh, that's an obligation that we have. The SEC, that's their main mission, really, right, is to make sure that information is accurate and forthcoming. But to tell people what they can do with that information is so paternalistic and so contrary, really, to the interest of investors in the long term that I would be strongly opposed to that. Senator, let's shift gears and, and talk about the COVID relief package, the next one that's on the table. Those 10 senators, the Republicans who are going to the White House today, you're not on the list. But what do you think of the proposal that they're putting forth? Look, it looks to me like uh, so. First of all, we haven't seen specific details, but we've seen general discussion. And it looks to me like a whole lot more of what we just did. I mean, literally just 36 days ago, I think it was, we passed a trillion dollar spending bill spending money on, on health care, on unemployment insurance, on direct payments, on nutrition supplements, PPP loan. We did all of that to the tune of almost a trillion dollars after, as you know, $3 trillion we did last spring. So why we need a few, literally weeks later, to come back and do it all over again, um, I don't get that. M most of this money, by the way, hasn't even really been spent yet. So uh, I, I think, I, I just don't think there's a good case for redoing this, maybe even on a bigger scale, if according to President Biden, if he had his way, um, I, I think it's a bad idea. What about just the COVID uh, vaccine money itself? Would you go along with yeah, that? Or so is there basically it, nothing in this bill that you think is as necessary? Well, I, I haven't seen the case for what is, but I, look, I, I, I firmly believe we should be doing everything we can to make sure this vaccine gets into people's arms as quickly as it possibly can. If it turns out that right now an obstacle is money, then I'm open to that. But absolutely. We've put a tremendous amount of money behind this, and it's not clear to me that that's what's, you know, that's the limiting factor right now. But if it is, then by all means, I'm open to that. That's, that's the one thing we absolutely have to do as quickly as we possibly can. Um, beyond that, um, you know, the economy is in a totally different place than it was in uh, you know, nine months ago, whenever it was, when we were in a free fall. Now we're in a very strong growth mode where we have isolated sectors that are really hurting transportation and hospitality, the restaurant sector, those folks. Um, something targeted, I mean, that's a lot of what we just did, right? The new round of PPP loans is designed to be very conducive for those sectors. Um, I don't think 
President Biden has made the case. It, it's probably worth pointing out, though, with those 10 senators, it doesn't really matter what anybody else thinks. If, if he can reach a deal with those 10 <laughs> well, senators and the 50 de Democrats that are there, that's 60 votes and they could do it without budget reconciliation. You are correct. If every Democrat agrees and 10 Republican senators go along with them, then they can hit the 60 vote threshold. And of course, assuming that the, the House and the president are on board, that uh, that'll get it done. Um, but, you know, yeah. that's yet to be seen. It is. Senator Jimmy, I want to thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. Sure. Thanks for having me.